Hi, welcome to episode five of Turtle Burger Crochet Podcast. My name is Brittany. Today we have a few works in progress. First, thank you so much for being here with me. Let's get into it. First work in progress this week um, is actually half done. It's a pair of socks for my daughter. I'm so excited. Well, I found out that 10 Can Knits has a worsted version, just the rye sock pattern. So this is what I'm making for my daughter. It is so stinking cute. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my gosh. It is adorable. You guys, I made a sock. I'm so excited. So, so excited. So um, the pattern has this decorative thing on the front here and this little sock. This is their toddler sock. Um, it is still a little big for her, but that's okay. I wanted her to grow into it. Um, it's very, very cute. I'm so excited. They are adorable on her, even though they're a little big. Um, the only modification I made, which was by accident, so you start out, they're cuffed down, you start with the cuff, um, and with a 3.25 millimeter ne needle, and I got so into it that I forgot what I was doing, <laughs> so the first two rounds, um, of the leg pattern, um, are still in the 3.25 millimeter, even though I was supposed to change over to a 3.75. So, um, and I think that made this part a little tighter because this is a little tight on her leg. Um, so I had to make sure to put that in my notes section so that I would remember to do that on the next sock. Oh my goodness, guys. The second sock, I see why people get like, whatever, what do they call that? The second sock itis or something because I was still into it but I got pretty far in and I was I had done the heel turn and was pretty far along and then for some reason one of the decrease rows it was not working out at all I don't know I was doing magic loops so I don't know if I got things turned around I'm not sure anyway so I thought no big deal I'll put a lifeline in and just um go back a row and I had also tried unknitting and unpurling that row and it wasn't working so that's why I thought I would just put a lifeline in <sighs> what drama that was at least well it was inside my head it probably wasn't really because it was only happening in my head <laughs> anyway so not only did the lifeline not work the whole sock unraveled i was like no you've got to be kidding me this is not happening so these stitches are on hold right here um so i've worked the cuff again and this and this is the heel flap i don't i'm not really sure of the parts of the sock but anyway there's this part and i'm getting ready to do another part <laughs> i think that's before the heel the heel, okay, so there's the heel flap, the heel turn, and then the gusset. Anyway, and I just have to point out that my progress keeper matches it. It's so cute. It's a little, it looks like a little heart lollipop. That's from um, Louise of Adventures with yarn that I won a while back. So, so cute. Anyway, um, I am really liking this pattern, and it's actually really easy uh 10 can knits their their pattern writing of course this is the only one um that i've looked at so far but it is really well written for beginner knitters so i'm um, very excited about that and they also have a flax and a flax light sweater that i want to make it's basically the same pattern as this but one's in sock form, one's in um, sweater form, or at least I think it is because the sleeves have this 
decorative pattern on it. So, so cute. Um, but anyway, back to the sock. It I have never changed colors in knitting. Um, I have been kind of afraid to do that, but I have a bunch of um, like a Red Heart Super Saver Christmas yarn um, that I don't really know what to do with. So I'm going to try change using that as changing colors and make her and hopefully my whole family but definitely her because she uses less yarn um christmas socks and make the cuff red and then the leg part in the christmas yarn and then the um heel and the toe and the red yarn and i think that would give me plenty of practice so very excited for that ah i was so excited <laughs> Last year, I made her a Christmas crochet dress in red and white. She, it was a little tight to begin with, and so she never wore it again. And I thought, you know, I put in all that work, and she, she wore the thing for one day for like an hour for pictures. <laughs> that was it. So, um, I discussed with my husband about maybe this year making something that fit her personality a little more and that she could continue to wear so she um looks so cute in like little tunic style things with like little roughly uh sleeves so i found one that we both liked that looks so much like her we call them her pat pat shirts because we got them off of pat pat um several months ago have you ever tried pat pat if you can this their clothes are actually super cute really good priced and if you can wait a month for something to come from china <laughs> i kind of recommend pat pat but anyway so we call them her pat pat shirts and she looks so cute in them and they just kind of like fit her personality like one of them says today i will be a unicorn and one of them says love every color of the rainbow and they're just so cute and like with little leggings anyway so i wanted to simulate that for her christmas dress the other thing about this is we also decided after discussing it with my husband that in order for her to be able to wear it more we're not traditionalist in the fact that she has to have red and white and green for christmas we want something that she yes that she can wear it, she won't wear it before christmas but something again that she will wear after christmas and into the spring so i have i have some missing yarn i'll be back i found my missing yarn <laughs> i thought i had it all together but apparently not so there's not much to write home about or podcast about but this is what it is so this pattern that i'm making for her christmas dress is um the sarasota girls flutter tunic it's by cheryl somebody i can't remember who but i'll have it linked below and i'm doing it in the mandala which is a size three yarn and it's starting out with this peachy color that so far this is just the cast on plus one row of pearls um but it's hopefully I'm starting at the neck. I'm pretty sure I am. I don't know. <laughs> I hope I am because I wanted this color at the top and then it's gonna go um, this peachy color. Then the, the um, I think there's one or two levels of pur purple and then this and then this and then this. You know how it is. It, it's a pretty yarn. And look, I even did a gauge swatch. Yay! So in crochet, I'm not usually on target with the um with the designers because i tie i crochet really tightly so i'm very thrilled to report that i did make gauge <laughs> for this tunic um so so excited about that it is such a cute um little little shirt i'm doing it in size four um she's a year and a half old but she's kind of a big year and a half and um, so I'm thinking it'll be kind of like a dress. And then um, as she grows, it'll end up being kind of like a shirt she can wear um, with like little leggings or something. So super, super cute. 
I am excited about that. It will be my first knitted garment. I so that is really exciting and I'm glad that it's like child size because it'll give me an idea <clears throat> of how things kind of go and I also don't have to really deal with sleeves. It has like little ruffled sleeves but not like sleeve sleeves. You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe capped ruffles or something. I don't know what you would call it but anyway super cute. Super excited about that. Definitely. Um. Okay. So that's it for knitting. Um, my next crochet project, these are also crocheted socks. So this came about like the day I finished that really cute purple sock I showed you earlier. It is the Simplicity sock from Ashley Lather Designs. Well, this one has kind of a backstory too. So I did a gauge swatch because I wasn't sure because like I said, I don't usually make gauge with crochet, I'm a, usually a very tight crocheter. So she calls for an H five millimeter hook. So I'm like, la di da, I'll do the gauge. And one thing that I, I love crochet, but one thing that I don't like really in wearables is crochet tends to be kind of gappy like, and um, I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> So I was like, I, her socks didn't look very gappy, but I was like, I wonder how that's going to work with socks. But I really want to make a crochet socks because I just came off of my first knitting sock and really liked it. So I wanted to incorporate crochet. So anyway, so this was my five millimeter and I thought, ah, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of, kind of holy, kind of gappy. So what I did was I went down and just added a couple of rows of four and a half millimeter and the gauge was not, it looks like it would be a lot different in this. You can't even tell like where the four and a half is, but it really wasn't when I measured it and maybe I was measuring it wrong. I don't know. And I thought, well, if there's not much difference, I'll use the four and a half because the gaps would be, or like holes would be smaller, if that makes sense. So I got out the um, yarn I'm using for that sock, by the way, is Lion Brand Summer Nights. This is the Ocean Cove color. It has a little bit of sparkle in it. It's actually super, super soft. It is um, acrylic and polyester. 82% acrylic and 18% polyester. Usually sock yarn has um, nylon in it. So I don't know if there's a difference between that and the polyester, but the polyester is what I used. So anyway, so I thought, well, I'll use the four and a half. Sorry, I've got my yarns tangled up down here. Anyway, so I thought, well, I'll use the four and a half and go ahead and make my sock. So here is the first ever crocheted sock. Um, it was easy. I wasn't loving it. And because I wasn't sure if it was too tight or not. I, I wasn't sure how it was supposed to fit. Obviously, I haven't weaved in my hands. Obviously, it's an ankle sock. But when I got to the heel, it, I, I don't know, it just wasn't right. But anyway, so I kept going and um, I did everything within pattern. And then when I got, she finishes off with two row, two rounds of single crochet. I couldn't even get it over the top of my foot anymore. So I had to rip out those two rows and I replaced them with two rounds of um, half double crochet, which is what the whole sock was using anyway. And I'm able to get it over my foot now, but I thought I'm not gonna make another, a second sock that I'm not sure is, is gonna fit right. So what I thought what I would do is, um, I thought, well, I thought a couple of things. So I thought no big deal because I can always rip this out if need be and use it for something else. No big deal there. Or I could even use it as like a little decoration. So I have a small foot, so it would be kind of cute as a decoration. I thought no big deal. It was good practice. So what I did was I thought, well, I'll get this other, um, 
Lion Brand Summer Nights, and this is in Tropical Punch. I thought, well, I'll use this one and make another sock completely in by the um, by Ashley Aether's instructions with the H hook. And that's what I've been working on. I've lost a couple of stitches here, but um, so I'm completely doing it. Look how neat that is. That's kind of cool. Um, so I'm completely doing it by her instructions. Sometimes you just have to trust the designer and quit trying to do things on your own. And is that not so true in life? Hello. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to trust the creator. Anyway, um, and so I thought, and this is working out much better. So I think I did something wrong with my gauge, personally. Um, so I'm probably going to end up ripping that other one out. This one is fitting much better. Um, I'm working on the heel right now. Um, but it's actually a very easy design. I think the, um, crocheted socks are a little better or a little easier than the knitted ones. But as far as garments and even socks and things, I think I and this is part of the reason why I wanted to learn to knit. I like knitted things better. I just think they look better. They look more um, professional or commercial. I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for. But anyway, so that's what I'm working on with crochet. That's it. Um, I also, I did not cast it on, but I was cleaning some of my little area out the other day. <laughs> and you know, as crocheters and knitters like the yarn usually speaks to us <laughs> and we're like i want to make something with this yarn sorry i hit the camera um well the other day i was like i said cleaning out this area and i found my um not found because it wasn't lost i just had it in a in a box um but i saw my um chiago 16 inch nine millimeter needle and i was like I really want to use that. So um, by the next podcast, I'm hoping to get back like on a every one to two week schedule. Um, but I am hoping to have a hat casted on because I really want to do that. Um, and this is also totally random. I'm not going to discuss it here because there's a whole series of um, hashtag movie and stitch that I'm doing with the year of dishcloths. So technically this is another work in progress. And in case you don't watch those, I'll just show it to you, but I'm not going to go into detail on it. So this is the, um, I think it's called that doc, um, dishcloth that I'm doing for the year of dishcloths. If you would like to know more about that, you can check out, um, my hashtag movie and stitch series where I watch a movie and tell you about it. And while that's going on, I am knitting a dishcloth okay so that is it for episode five of the turtle burger crochet podcast thank you so much for joining me i hope you have a great day and i will see you in the next episode bye <laughs>